Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome to CTU Counterterrorism Unit. What is CTU Counterterrorism Unit, you ask? I like to call it a Special Forces Tactical First Person Shooter. It's available on Steam and this is what it looks like. So I'm a real big fan of the genre of tactical first person shooters. Unfortunately, the last few good ones were Rainbow Six 3 and SWAT 4, so literally over 10 years ago. All entries in the genre since then were for the most part pretty shit and there weren't a lot of them anyway. So every time a new tactical first person shooter comes up, I'm really excited and hope that it's gonna be a good one. So is this a good one? Unfortunately not. It's not super terrible, I'm not gonna say that's the worst game ever, but it's definitely not good. So what makes a good first person tactical shooter? Well in my opinion that's three different things. Really good mechanics and interesting mechanics. Um, like a good variety of different tactical mechanics and, and stuff like that and well implemented Really really good AI for your opponents and your enemies uh, op opponents and enemies. Yeah opponents and allies and Good level design. So the level design in this game is actually okay. It's not bad You have pretty good interesting spots with multiple ways to go and different angles to cover and stuff like that So level design is okay. The other two departments however are pretty lackluster um Especially the AI. Let's talk about mechanics first though. So the good thing is there's actually a good variety of interesting and different mechanics. It's more aiming for SWAT 4 than for Rainbow Six. Um, so uh, for example you have to report when you take down an enemy or um, your primary t primary goal is actually not to kill the enemies and uh, instead to res uh, rescue, arrest them. <laughs> um, not rescue them, no. <laughs> uh, so it's more in the direction of SWAT 4. Uh, but you have different th things like you can uh, use a spy cam and stuff like that. It's not like it's not as complex You don't have as many items and different gadgets and stuff as in SWAT as in the SWAT games But it's still like it's a decent amount of variety for mechanics. I feel um, Especially for a low-budget game uh, with a pretty cheap price However, the implementation of those mechanics is not brilliant, especially the movement. So first of all, there's pretty annoying head bopping It's not as annoying when you're walking, but when you run it gets really crazy like this is holy shit the main issue though I have with the walking is uh, that it's floaty so um, I'm gonna hold down W for a moment and I will let it go in three two one now did you see I moved at least half a second longer than this and it's worse while running so if you do this for running it's one thing I mean you could argue it's realistic you cannot just stop from 100 to 0 when you're running however if you're moving slowly and tactical then you should be able to stop instantly the game like a tactical shooter has to feel responsive and this definitely doesn't like this is this movement system is oh god this should be a fairly easy fix though and the developers already pushed to update since release which actually improved a few things not like they didn't completely redo the game, but yeah, it's not an early access title though, so it's really so I don't expect too many more updates, but you never know. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's that's about uh, the mechanics. Um, which we, I will show you a few more mechanics in a moment, but let's talk about AI and let me em demonstrate the ally AI. So those are our teammates. You can have between one and four, I believe. Um, you have to buy them though because there's like a campaign mode where you have to like hire more guys uh, and you earn money by doing missions. There's some weird graphical flicker in the background and wall there. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, the game doesn't look very well, uh, very good, as you probably noticed already. So this is around the level of SWAT 4 actually, and so in, in general, like the game looks like from from a graphical standpoint, it looks similar to SWAT 4, like on the same level more or less. Like it's not way better or way worse. Like it's it's it looks like a triple A game from ten years ago, um, and. But mechanically, it's just not as good as SWAT 4. So you, you're just better off playing SWAT 4 for the most part. Uh, the, I mean, the biggest op, um, the biggest upside is probably that like the multiplayer is um, supported fairly well. Like mechanically, it's working. And when you do that with old game, even you try to play multiplayer with old games, you usually get in trouble um, because stuff is not working anymore. Servers are down and stuff like that. So yeah, actually, um, I want to say that before we continue, I think this game is actually played best in co-op and I think it can be decent fun in co-op. It's still not going to be brilliant and I'm going to talk about why but it's probably better than in the single player campaign because the AI is utter dog shit for the most part. So those are our allies. Um, they're actually um, separated in, in different teams. You have Alpha Team, Bravo Team 
and Charlie's team. Alpha team for for some reason is all. Like Alpha team is just all all soldiers, including you and all. I'm not sure why that's called Alpha team. Um, it should just be called all teams or something. It's not quite obvious. Uh, Bel uh, Bravo team is actually the first and the second guy you have, and Charlie team is the third and the fourth fourth guy, which is dumb as shit. <laughs> Because in the beginning you only will have one or two guys, so they're in the same team, so you cannot order and order them around um, independent from each other, independently from each other. So that's that's really really strange. Um, but anyway, we can order them around. We can, for example, tell them to uh, follow me. Oops, that was that was the wrong button. I'm sorry, that was my bad. So I have to press space to get the the command menu, and then press left mouse button to give them orders, and now they will follow me around. I can tell them to move fast, which will make them run instead of move slowly. They're still slower than me, but for the most part it works. Uh, well, it works, but they're slower than me. That's just what I wanted to say. And um, yeah, I can give them other um, other uh, uh, orders. I'm actually not quite sure what the difference between cover area and move to area is, because um, it basically does the same. They will move to that position and uh, look in that direction. And I mean, they will still gonna shoot. Uh, and even though I didn't tell them to cover this area, I just told them to move there. They will still move there to shoot. They're, as you can see, they're not like getting in a tactic position or anything. They're just moving to that point where I pointed them to go and will go there and will face the direction they're walking. And that's actually the thing that AI do, that's for the most part. The same goes for breaching doors and stuff like that. So if I actually want them to cover an area, I will have to like move them around quite a bit. For example, let's say I want to cover, I want them to cover this area or this direction, like standing here and covering this direction. I first have to actually move them over here and then move them back here so they turn around. Wrong button, sorry. So there we go, and they will turn around. And they're still like, they're standing behind each other. Like it's not the worst position to be in, I guess. But yeah, it's not great. They don't go in cover or anything. I, I believe at least they don't. Let's actually see, I never tried, to be honest. I just assumed they don't. No, they don't. They just move where you order them to go. So yeah, the, the AI is pretty bare, um, pretty bare bones, which is very unfortunate. And it's like, while this works for moving around, it gets really, really bad when you go getting to doors. So this is a tutorial level. There's only one door here. And um, yeah, let's say tell them to go there. Uh, and there's only one door with two enemies behind. And uh, so let me show you the the uh, snake uh, the snake snake camera, which is cool that it's in there. I really appreciate the fact that the game has a snake camera. And uh, actually, I have to say I appreciate the fact that the game has working doors for the most part. It has doors. Like that's more than red uh, so what's it called would take down red saber had and that's more than rainbow six siege actually has with it which is a fucking triple a title <laughs> which doesn't have fucking doors so yeah we have working doors you cannot like open them like in rainbow six uh, three where you have like this fluent opening system with the mouse wheel you can't do that you just can open them uh, you can actually like, not close them anymore which is interesting as well but you have doors so that's cool um, so we have the snake cam, we go here, we press F and we can look through it. Uh, this is not how a snake cam works, like it should usually go below the door. Um, but uh, I mean it works from a mechanic standpoint, I guess. You see, oh, two enemies. You cannot, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately you cannot like target them or tell your guys to like focus this guy or focus this guy. You can't do that. That would be cool. That would actually make the game a bunch more playable um, for the reason I'm going to demonstrate to you in a moment. Because they're really bad. They're really bad at clearing rooms. Okay, so. Uh, what can we do? Um, first, um, switching back to my main weapon. We have a secondary weapon and we have a grenade. Um, the grenade, you cannot, you cannot, we have a flashbang right now, you can see in the upper right. You can actually not cook it for some reason. If I press G, G it will automatically throw the grenade. And um, that makes it really hard to time it. Like if you want to do like breaching, uh, breach flash clear or open flash clear open flash clear I guess because you can actually not breach in a game which is very unfortunate you can just open the door you cannot breach and you can lock pick it sometimes it's um, locked up uh, so yeah not being able to cook the grenade makes this way harder you can order your allies to do that but they're not really good at it so let's demonstrate what I'm talking about all the time shall we so we we aim at the door we uh, get the command window up and we have a new entry which is called prepare for entry you could tell them to use the camera they will not give you really really useful information they will tell you if there are enemies behind but not where they are or how many um, so yeah using the snake cam yourself is probably the better idea and you tell them to prepare for entry so you would think they would stack up now right yeah that's that's not how you prepare for a door breach like no that, that's 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 not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Like he's way too far from the door. I guess he's he assumes me to be here 
Um, so that's why he sticks, uh, stays back there. But yeah, that's that's way too far away. And yeah, they're not going in cover anyway. Anything. They're just staying in front of the door, basically. So this is pretty bad. Uh, it gets worse if you give them more orders. Like, I tell him to try open the door, which will check if it's locked or not. So he gets closer now. And now he actually is in a better position. That, uh, but if I tell him to prepare for entry again, he will just stay there. Basically, um, actually, I want to try something. I never tried that before. Let, let me see if I can fool around with the AI even more. What is uh, what happens if I tell them to move here? So get pretty close to the door, and now I tell them to prepare for entry. Yeah, that's what I think. Oh, actually, he moved away. Okay, never mind. I expected them to just stay there. He's pretty close though. So um, anyway. He told me the door is not locked, right? Yeah, okay, so we don't have to lockpick it. Lockpicking is fairly easy. You just hold the key or you tell them to do it, which works as well. Okay, now we have different commanders, which is cool. We have different options to go into uh, into the door. We don't, we cannot, we cannot actually breach the door, which is unfortunate, as I mentioned. But we can just open it. We can open it clear. We can open flash and clear, open smoke and clear, and open frag and clear. However, you usually probably just want to do open, and d open the door and maybe sometimes open and clear. But for the most part, opening the door is probably your best bet. Okay, what happens when I tell them to open and clear the door? So let me get in a whoops, wrong button. Um, in a better position first. So we go over here because that's the, that's the position we're expected to be in, right? We tell them to open and clear. Okay, what would you? Ex I press the wrong button again. Sorry. What would you expect this guy to do when he preaches this room or clears his room? Well, he goes in. There we know where there are two guys and goes to the right and takes down the right guy or arrests him or whatever. Well, let's see what he does. Yeah, that's that's definitely a great move. <laughs> they actually managed to take out the enemies, which is <laughs> which is um, surprising. Um, so they actually managed to kill them. Uh, basically, because in the last two patches, the allies got like they got buffed on a mechanical level, like their aim is higher, their reaction times are shorter, and the opponents are like they're just mechanically um, worse. They're not like do more dumb, or uh, they're more they're not more intelligent than the enemies. They're just better, like at aiming and stuff, which is probably why they succeed at the store breach. But what this guy did is like the worst thing of all. Like usually there are like there are different strategies for breaching doors. The the, the well known from movies and games is you open a door, you rush in and clear the room, and you leave the what's it called funnel? No, uh, de violence something. I don't know. I forgot how it's called. Death something. Um, you leave this area instantly because because obviously it's super easy if an enemy is in this room to just cover the door. So you don't want to be in here, and you block sight for your allies. You block your allies from entering the door and stuff like that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to leave this area. Also, you usually want to go to the right when you're the right guy, and to the left when you're the left guy. Um, but what he did was he was walking in, saw an enemy, and was like aiming at him, and told him to put his weapon down. Well, that's Probably not a good idea because I was here and the other opponent was there, so he was in my line of sight. He blocked the doorway. Well, he did not block it physically, but he blocked it like from a visual, um, like visually. And yeah, that was just and you cannot like you cannot change that behavior. I will always do that. It gets uh, even more funny if you do an open flash and clear. But I'm gonna demonstrate that in a moment. So what you can do now, well, let's talk about more mechanics first. Is you can pick up the weapons, which will give you bonus points at the end. So we do that, and then you can report the enemies. The game actually doesn't tell you how to do that, but I figured it out <laughs> eventually. And when you report all the enemies, um, like you have to kill or arrest all enemies and then report all of them, uh, you complete the level. Then you get points. You get 10 times the points, like you get 100 points for arrested enemies and 10 points for killed enemies. So you, the incentive is definitely to arrest them and not kill them. And um, you get 10 points per collected weapon. And um, yeah, a bunch of other things for civilians and stuff like that. But that's the main things. And based on your score, you get money. This is a training mission, so we get less money than usual. But um, yeah, let's go back to base. Uh, let's try it again. And I'm gonna demonstrate you the open flash and clear because that's that's hilarious. Open flash and clear can actually work. Like they're not super bad at it in certain situations, but they're bad at it in most situations. And uh, the reason for that is that they like most of the for uh, for the most part they're positioning actually so we tell them to follow me and we run over there the enemies actually in like not in this level but in other levels will actually react to to noise so if you're shooting and stuff like that they will come through doors and try to figure out what's going on and uh, try to take you out so that's good um, however there is no way to be sneaky like there are no no um... where are they 
Hi! Oh, I didn't tell him to move quickly. Okay, my bad. <laughs> uh, there, there are no, um, what's it called, sound suppressors and stuff like that. So again, like, where is he standing? What the fuck? Okay, let's demonstrate open, flash, and clear. Prepare for entry. And uh, try to open the door. You can actually not do that. At least I didn't figure out how how to do it. You can just press F, which will open the door if it's possible. If it's not, um, if it is unlocked, and say that it's locked. Or start the lock picking when it's locked. Uh, so that's a little weird. But your allies can actually check it without opening it. Uh, what did you tell me? Door is open. Okay, so we can just do the open, flash, and clear. Okay, let's just see what happens, shall we? I'm gonna stand back. Do I, do I have to do I have to comment this? <laughs> what? That was actually though no, I have to to be fair, that was actually um the bad AI combined with the bug it has. So what happened? We're gonna go in there again because it's easier to show instead of just talk. Uh, what happens? They will open the door, grab the flashbang, and throw it in the room. And then they will usually or that's at least their their usual order is to actually stay back, wait for the flashbang go off, and go in. They will not do that, however, when they see an enemy. So what happens? This guy's standing here, throwing a flashbang, seeing that enemy, and starts moving in, going for that enemy instead of waiting for the flashbang to go off. Or actually, what he should do is obviously stand here, open the door, throw the flashbang in, stay in cover, wait for the flashbang to go off, rush in. He's clearly not doing that. The other thing that happened is um, there is a bug with the AI. I'm not, I cannot reproduce it, but it happens uh, like that was at least the second time it happened to me. Um, what am I doing? Ah, pressing the wrong button again. Um, at least the second time it was happening to me that they actually like clear the wrong room. They're clearing the room they're coming from. Like he was running into, I, I, it might have to, something to do with the flashbang, I'm not sure. He was running into the doorway. I think he actually threw the flashbang to its own feet, I'm not quite sure. The flashbangs are not as effective as they could be anyway. Like if you throw them in the left part of the room, the guy on the right will probably not be flashed, or at least in most cases. And anyway, so he was standing in the door frame and was actually then deciding to clear the room and decided to clear this room. Which is a dump back, obviously, but yeah, it happened twice so far. It's not like happening every time, but yeah, it, it, it happens, which is dumb. So it looked even worse than it usually is. But yeah, you could you you saw the flaws in the AI dog clearly. So what is actually the best way to play this game? Well, the most efficient way, well, not for points, but the, the most efficient way for clearing the level is to just fucking open the door. Oh, he dropped the weapon already and kill all of them because they have really, really low reaction times and your weapon is ridiculously strong. And sometimes the arresting is not really working properly. Oh, also, if they drop the weapon, they will never ever stand up again. I could just leave here now. I could kill my allies and leave and we'll come back five minutes later and we'll still be in this pos uh, position. So this is actually like, he's, he's out of the game. He's just not killed but arrested already, and the actually arresting part is just like busy work basically. And where's this gun? There. They're randomized, if you didn't notice. Sometimes the door is locked, sometimes it's not. They have different weapons. There are some random factors in the game. Uh, which is good because it makes it less predictable. There we go. So yeah, I I cleared the whole second level, I believe, or maybe I, I canceled before I finished it, but most of most of it at least um, without my teammates and uh, by just running gunning through the game and killing everyone because the uh, opponents have pretty high aim times and your weapon is usually a one shot even if you don't aim down the sides, which is really weird for a game like this. Oh, we actually have enough money to buy a fourth guy, so let's do that for the sake of it. John, Bobby, Peter, and uh, Frank. Why not? So yeah, this is the progression system in the campaign mode. So you play missions. There are four tutorial missions and then four real missions. Only four. Very few amount of missions. And you get money for completing them. And you can buy more operators. And you can buy more equipment. And there is another problem here. It's um, important to have good customization in a tactical shooter usually. Um, because people really like to adjust their their gear and their weapons and their equipment to their needs and their play style. And you can do this in this game to some degree. 
you can't change the weapons. You cannot actually, like, you cannot put different attachments to your weapons. You cannot change the scope, for example, which is very unfortunate. Um, this is uh, the main gun. You have it from the beginning. I'm not even sure why it has a price tag because you have it anyway. So I'm not sure why, why you, like, I don't know. It has a price tag, but I don't know. Uh, it's super strong. I don't see a reason to buy anything else. I kill everyone on any range with one or two shots, even when not aiming down the sights. So, yeah. Um, there is a shotgun, but it's just superior, in my opinion. There's a heavy rifle. I've uh, never actually tried that. Well, I never tried the other ones in anyway. I didn't try anything so far because I was uh, focusing on getting more apparatus. But the first, the primary gun is just you working so well that you don't really need to think about buying another weapon, actually. There's actually... Oh, I have to take that back. There's actually a silent submachine gun. Okay, cool. And yeah, there's something about the secret code in the main menu options. I'm not sure what that is about. I couldn't find a secret code or anything. Maybe you get it by completing the game. I don't know. Um, funny thing is the secondary weapon as well. Because like there's a price tag again. But you already have it. And there's actually no choice here. You cannot switch it to something else. You cannot buy another one. Instead of snake cam, you can take uh, night vision goggles. Or a shield. Or heavy armor. Um, or extra ammo for the pistol. Or for the rifle, actually. Or another grenade. Um... I guess having a snake cam is pretty important if you're actually playing tactical. But you have the choice of going for the others, other options. I'm not sure if the Nightcrawkers are actually worth it. Because, like, I mean, the second level was a little dark. Or was it the third? I'm not sure. It was the second, I believe. But it was not super dark. Um, they are flashlight. You have a flashlight as well. It's super... Like, it's not really useful there. Because it's, like, focused on a pretty small area. Um, it can be very annoying to use. And, um, yeah, some people reported a bunch of bugs with the shield. In general, there are a bunch of bugs with the game. But a lot of, bu a lot of the bugs got um, fixed already as well, so that's good. Um, yeah, we could buy this, but we're not going to do that right now. Well, we didn't even have, even have the money, I think. So, yeah, I think the max squad size is actually five people. And um, let me just demonstrate the second mission today. Yeah, okay, I didn't complete it, but I, like, killed 90% of the enemies. And then I just got... Um, I got bored, so I stopped uh, just running around and gunning everyone down. But it's super effective. Okay, obviously you were not going to get too many points because you're not arresting people. Yeah, this this level is fairly dark. You can turn on the flashlight with the L button, but as you can see, it's really shitty. And your allies will actually turn on their flashlights as well. Interestingly enough, they have flashlights on their helmet, but it looks like your flashlight is on your gun. Which is strange, <laughs> if you think about it. But it's probably on your helmet as well, just like... It just doesn't show it very well. And um, yeah, as you can, we can demonstrate the squad thingy now. So we have Alpha Team, that's all. We have Bravo Team, uh, move there. Which will move those two guys. And we have Charlie Team, which is this guy. There we go. Stay there. Okay, and uh, what you can do now is you press the run button and just look for people. Nobody in here, okay. Was this this door? Or was there another door somewhere I heard? I'm not sure. We open this door. Nobody in here, okay. You can try to arrest them as well. That's a little bit more risky though. Okay, this one is locked. Wait, suspect, get out of here. There was a suspect. Where? Oh! They're shooting in the lobby! Uh... Seems like they took him down. Okay, good job. <laughs> ah! There's another one. Okay, I took a decent amount of damage. That never happened before, actually. Uh, one of them was surrendering, but I guess we're okay. Um, so yeah, you could play this running guy. It's obviously not a way to play this game. That's not how it's supposed to be played um, anyway. But yeah, I don't know. Um, the AI is just so bad that it's not fun to play this tactical as well, um, either, because it would just screw up all your door breaches. Well, your door, your, your room clears, I guess, like you cannot breach doors. So, I think the best way to actually play this is probably in co-op, and I, th I see this being reasonably fun in co-op. I couldn't try it, um, because there's no player base, so you have to have friends who want to play the game. And I cannot, I, I don't want to force my friends to play this game with me, to be honest. Um, anyway, I see this game being reasonably fun in co-op. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to press the save button. There is no auto-saving at all. So if we go back to the, to the um, campaign, to the career mode. And as far as I know, there's no way to delete this, um, the profile either, interestingly enough. Which can be a little annoying. 
I assume. Oh, it actually saved. Never mind. Maybe they changed that, or I did something wrong the last time. Um, the last time it didn't save, for some reason. Um, but there's a save game button, and yeah, it will save the game. Oh yeah, I forgot. If you're not on a training mission, uh, operator death is actually permanent. So you have to rebuy the operators if you lose them. So you want to be really careful about that. Which makes the game way more slow-paced, but then again makes it more reasonable to, sorry, to just run around on your own. Because you're more, more, more in control of the situation. And it's less likely that you actually will die. So yeah, <laughs> um, like the most efficient way is to go on, go out on your own. Uh, try to make the enemy surrender, but in in the, when you're in doubt, just shoot them, because as I said, your weapon is crazy strong. So there is multiplayer, but nobody's playing. I can actually check to so see if someone is playing there. It doesn't seem to be the case. Um, but like yeah, there were bugs um, on release with this, but I think they're fixed. Uh, I didn't at least not I did not uh, I at least did not see more reports about multiplayer not working and I saw a bunch of people writing on the forums that they had great fun with the multiplayer and as I said I see the multiplayer being reasonably fun because you don't have to um, have to go around uh, like you don't have to uh, bother with your um, ally AI you still have the mediocre mechanics and you still have dumb enemies but like if you're like if you're not playing optimal and, st and instead you're trying to make actually cool moves and like clearing doors, uh, clearing rooms together and coordinate and stuff like that, I think this can be fun. But the, it's not gonna be fun because the game makes you play this way, it's gonna be fun because you decide to play this way. And yeah, but at least the game gives you the option to do this for the most part except for the lacking mechanics. But they're not super terrible, as, as I said. You at least have the options to open the door. You, you have doors for the. For, <laughs> um, you can use a snake cam and flashbangs and stuff like that. So that's cool. That's cool. Uh, there's also a level editor. It's pretty pretty basic. Um, it's considered in beta actually to be in beta, and there's workshop support as well. So that works. People uh, created maps with this already. I will not. I cannot be bothered to create a map with this because um, this is really, really, really fucking basic like you have to i don't know this it doesn't seem to what was the place button again i figured this out once um oh it says up there create left shift mouse for some reason i cannot just press mouse um it's not really helpful like sometimes it has like these snapping thingies it's not great like it's not terrible i, I guess it's servable but yeah it's not not yeah some people have created decent apps with this already well, I'm not sure if they're decent, but at least they created some maps with it. So yeah, it's good to good to have a feature like this. Uh, it could be improved though. But it's not the worst, I guess. <sighs> yeah, unfortunately, again, a pretty bad tactical shooter. Um, so yeah, let's uh, take a look at the option menu and then wrap it up, shall we? So we have different languages. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's important, but good to have anyway. Resolution options. Uh, the option menu is actually quite decent. You have um, overall quality and shadow quality and anti-aliasing. Um, you have you can turn off multiplayer names, uh, target full screen and window mode. There's wait, there's I, I think there's no no there's no borderless window mode. No, there's not. Um, you can turn off blood if you want. You have separate sound sliders for sound and music. You have mouse sensitivity, which is good. You can turn off motion blur. You can turn on and or off SSAO and post processing. So that's pretty good. Oh, there's the secret code thing. Huh. I wonder how you get that. And um, you have rebindable keys as well, which is cool. Uh, there's one weird bug. This is deactivating itself all the time. I have to reactivate it every fucking time. <laughs> I don't know why. But yeah, but you have rebinded keys, which is cool. So the option menu is actually pretty good. The option menu is decent. It's not super brilliant and has super special options like uh, FOV slider is missing, for example. Um, borderless window mode would be nice. But overall, the option menu is probably the best part of the game, which is really sad, actually. So yeah, it's just another terrible first-person tactical shooter. No, not terrible. It's not terrible. That's unfair. But it's not the game I was looking for. I hope that changes in the future. <laughs> I really need one. I don't need one, but I really would like to have one. Anyway, uh, it's called CTU Counterterrorism Unit. I think it can be fun if you play it with friends. Uh, it's not that expensive uh, on release. Like well, right now, it's ten bucks. Um, probably going on sale for pretty cheap at some point. So yeah, 
maybe you're interested in it. Uh, the link is in the description below. As always, I'm TH Pine. Thanks all for watching. Have fun and see you next time.